Good morning, modern steaders. This is my favorite day of the whole pig harvesting project. You know what day today is? Today, we're gonna be turning our delicious pork belly, the first pot of curing it and turning it into bacon. Oh, oh, oh. one of the big reasons for raising pigs, right? Bacon. Bacon. Bacon, bacon. Bacon. You got yourself a broom for down here now? Yep, good to go. Good to go. Go on to Figaro. Any signs of mice? I don't see any new signs. Nothing fresh. Figaro, you might have to camp out down here one night. You enjoying the chicken grain now, Figaro? We set that for auction. One buttercup. Ready for breakfast? <clears throat> Boy, my voice is cracking bad today. I don't know if you hear that noise or not. Like the woo 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 woo. That's Caleb over there talking. It's breeding season, so he's trying to talk nice to the ladies. That's right, some good milk there, Buttercup. That'll go good in my coffee after lunch. Don't be drinking my coffee, my yogurt milk. Your coffee? Yeah, that too. Ready? I don't have any, I already gave you your stuff. You already had your treat. Come on in, Hope. Ivy, Nora. You coming, Blossom? Come on, we'll go down the feeder. All right, ladies, you ready for your another day of deworming balls? Crazy girls. You all think your dewormer's good. We give our goats herbal dewormer balls once a week. And I think it's every third week. You gotta give them a different one for three days in a row. The herbs are from Molly's and then we mix them up with molasses and put some, some other kind of powder on them that make them look like a powdered donut for the goats. Makes it so it's not so sticky on our hands. And it works really good. You boys ready for your herbal balls? I hear them. Oh. Better hurry up before they bite your fingers off. There you go. There's your treat for the day. You've got plenty of hay still over there. You stank. You need to stop peeing all over yourself. It's not attractive. No, the ladies don't like it either. I'm telling you, they don't. All right, so today we have our bacon bellies, our pork bellies, I should say, that we need to slab up to fit inside of our Ziploc bags, and then we're gonna make our equilibrium brine, and they will sit in a brine and cure for seven to 10 days, and then we'll smoke them. So the pork bellies aren't as massive as I was hoping for. They're not as thick. One year we got about 67 pounds of pork bellies. This year we got, I think, high 30s, low 40s. We'll weigh them in a little bit. 
And I'm thinking the year that we got the 60s, I had a free choice feeder out for the pigs. So I'll have to remind, I'll have to re remember next spring to try doing the free choice feeder all year and see if we get big bacon again. You want big bacon? I want big bacon. This is, this is tasty bacon, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna be happy with how it tastes. But it's not like this pot right here isn't thick all the way through like we have had in the past. So you think we can get... So you don't, it doesn't cook as good either though, right? Right. Because it's not. So if I cut that in half... Yeah. Just so I don't know that why raise well. Wow, I think I need to take that knife. Oh, this is my special knife. Oh, where do you keep that? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes up missing, I'll know. Like, I cut my finger. I just want to keep it flat. After we have this all cured up, then I'll trim it up and make it into nicer squares and that way we'll have some cubes that we can put into soups and stews and beans to flavor with. This one fills the tote. Now we need to weigh our bacon and figure out the weights of each slab. And we like to do it in grams. Makes it an easier conversion when we're trying to figure out how much salt, pepper, and uh, maple syrup we're gonna be using if we have grams. So unit grams. The recipe that we found that we liked for our taste buds is 2.24% salt, 3% sugar, and we use maple syrup for our sugar, and then 0.2% of pepper, because we're not very spicy people, or maybe we're spicy enough <laughs> without the pepper. That's what we'll say. Or too and, spicy to add some more spice. Right. We got enough of our own kick. <laughs> so we just keep it simple. This is the recipe that we we perfect. I don't know, I want to say if we say we perfected it, but this is one that we found that our well, taste buds for us, yeah, makes our taste buds tingle. So if we go 1,332 grams times 0.0224 equals 29.8 grams of salt. And then we're gonna need, so one, three, three, times 0 0.03 for sugar equals uh, 40 grams of sugar. And then on our pepper, we'll go one, three, three, three times 0 0.002 equals 2.6 grams of pepper. All right, so now let's go through and get them all figured out.
We have our fancy measuring cups from Walmart. People always ask if we have a link. We don't, but they're from Walmart. 2.5 grams pepper. 2.5 grams. Pepper doesn't. Oh, be careful. There's gonna be no half, so we're gonna have to just guesstimate once we go over a bit. I'd rather have less pepper. Perfect. And then 3.7 grams of sugar. Dump it right on the center of the meat. Is it just gonna be on one side because you're gonna flip it, yeah, or it we'll needs to be on both it. sides? Right. So how will it move over? Equalizes. That's okay. the style of cure. So the salt ends up pulling out the liquid and makes a brine, and then it equalizes throughout the whole piece of meat, and that's why you flip it over back and forth, back and forth. The more air we can get out, the better. You can use a, what are those things called? A vacuum sealer, and they work good. And then you don't have to flip your bags, or if you wanted to, you could put a straw in here and suck it out, but I'm not feeling that today. I'm just gonna roll it, get as much of the air out as possible. And then I'll flip this one to two times a day. Start with the pepper, so three grams of pepper. Perfect. Come on. There we go. A little over, that'll do. That's gonna make a nice brine. We were young. The day I fell into the sun. Something down inside of me was telling me and I knew you were the one And it was time The ear out
She was stuck. Nothing is impossible with you. Life is just like a summer breeze. It's for the shot. So a little. Oh, that one's gonna be a little sweet. That could be for me. You could use a little extra sweetness in your life. I am as sweet as I come. I'm not sweet enough for you. Why are you so I'm using sweet? Yeah. Oh. And I'm saying I'm not sweet enough for you. Mm. Is that the issue? Depends on the day. It does. <laughs> Sweet. Some chocolate chip cookies, sweet. That's a start. All right, last bit of syrup. And then, in a couple of hours, by the end of the day, there's gonna be a brine, a liquid brine in here. So it's going to be equalizing throughout the whole slab and giving everything the same taste. And then you'll just flip them every day? Yep, I'll flip them over and give them a good rub down. One of the things we need to do is we need to water the greenhouse. I haven't watered it in like a week, but when we did the sweet, when we dug out the sweet potatoes, it didn't need any water, but I'm sure with the last few days being sunny, it needs water now. So we need to Disconnect the hose. Holy moly. There we go. Get this hose disconnected from our outdoor kitchen sink and we'll get it hooked up to the greenhouse. Gina was in the greenhouse for a few hours today going through some of the older string beans and spinach. So it's still something we are working in. There's plenty of food still in here and Plenty of things we need to keep up on. We actually need to get in here and pull out all of our tomato plants, get them composting. And our watermelons didn't do good. We need to pull them out. But it's looking good in here. We're still growing plenty of food. Oh yeah. If you guys are newer to the channel, we have drip irrigation set up in, ooh, that's dirty, the greenhouse. And it works really good. We're able to water the greenhouse very efficiently. There. Works out really well because it just waters right near the base of the plants and we're not watering all of the garden soil that we don't need to water. So we'll leave that on for an hour to two, and then we'll shut it off. You want to go out, Pluto? Sit down. Good girl. Sit, Tanner. Good boy. You, you gotta say sitting. Sit. Sit. You gotta stay out here, Tanner. Hey. You can't come in here. Come out. Good boy. You'll chase the goats. We can't have you chasing the goats, mister. How many eggs are you thinking? Well, we got 10 yesterday. Yep. Eight. Eight. Here come the goats. Oh, and Ivy's in the feeder. And I see Hope on the backside. I see her feet. I hear her chicken inside. Did she just get done laying an egg? Yep. Oh, what are you doing, Nora? You come see me? You want to get down because you like to climb off? Oh, you like to skew. Two. Four. How many eggs are you thinking? Five. Six, seven. That's a warm one. That was just laid. Eight, nine. We got ten again. Ten again. What are you doing, Hope? Oh, it's like you have a baby. 
How long do you think she's going to have a baby? It'd be nice if she was pregnant. She's full. She's full of hay. I don't think she's pregnant. They say not with Tanner right there. Come on. They know you got their food. You got all your sunflower seeds? Yeah. It probably took them two seconds. Probably. Here. Yep. You stinky boys. They do stink. Seven again. Look at this flock, it's doing good. Making me have to pee. I have some chicken cooking in the oven and I'm going to do some quinoa. I'm also going to um, prepare some green beans and carrots and then I'm just going to end up mixing that all together um, for our sides. So I'm just going to boil some chicken broth here and then add the quinoa once once that is at a boil. I was able to get out into the greenhouse today for a little bit and I do have some string beans um, growing still which is awesome. I don't cry when it rains no more or I get dirt on my shoes My new favorite way to cut up the carrots is the food processor. Love it. All the same size, mostly except for the ones that turn sideways. And it's super easy. Only one downfall, then I have to wash it, but it cleans up easy. I love, I can just go pull up the carrots out of the greenhouse and I'm hoping that our other carrots on the other side grow as nice as, as, nice as these ones because I'm sure we're going to use a ton of carrots. I think I can use this handy to anything if it's strong enough, let's see. Well, if we can get it in the bowl. It's not cheese.
You want this piece of carrot? Sit down. Gentle. Good boy. Fudo, you can have a piece too, but you don't really like carrot. You want it? Sit. Yeah. You want it just because... No? No? You don't want it? No. Can we eat it? Alright. You loud chewer. Well, I'm waiting for all that to cook. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of my peppers. So I did pull out most of the peppers. bit of butter and I'm just gonna add this to my quinoa add a little bit of salt to it we have our chicken so good Well, these chickens are delicious. You know what would make it better? Is if we wrapped it in homemade, home cured bacon. Oh, that's so good. I can't wait to smoke our bacon. We built the new smoker last winter. We didn't have any bacon to smoke it. We used it for making jerky and stuff like that. But I can't wait to try it out and make it our bacon. If you guys have any cures for making your own homemade bacon, I'd like to hear what you guys use. Leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, now is a great time to hit the subscribe button. Turn on all notifications, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at London Universe.